the smell of anhydrous in the morning. guys welcome back today should be my last day of pulling anhydrous um, I'm in the what is my last full field I got some patchwork to do over there where we're building new terraces and doing the dirt work uh, where they're gonna disc it up a little bit nicer but this field is 47 acres so I figured I'd take you guys along with me with me sorry <laughs> to uh, show you kind of what goes on when I'm pulling on anhydrous so I'm gonna do a new pattern I this is it's on a straight pattern that's what I use for back and forth so I changed my pattern to a smart, a smart path, which identical makes the identical path for um, the last path that I did, if that makes any sense to you at all. Um, so it copies my last pass. It's not a straight line or anything like that unless you're driving a straight line. My guidance width is in there, correct? Boom, there we go. Now we're ready to go. My power's on. Turn my master on, bleed my bar real quick. You'll see smoke come out of there beeping at me like it's not getting anything. Boom, smoke. Get myself a gear. Put the hammer down, give her some go-go juice, flip on my product. There's my rate, 175 pounds an acre, it's pulling it steady, um, and we're pulling. Okay, so here's the example of the smart path. As you can see how the line's curvy, uh, and the tractor's steering right now. I'm still on the headlands, obviously, um, but that's what the smart paths do really well for, is that if you're not on square fields, um, the smart path will compensate for that and still give you really good steering and guidance. Um, if you got hills, knobs, if you got a field like this basically, with waterways in there, uh, this field doesn't have any terraces in there, but lots of corners, lots of knobs and stuff like that. Smart Path does a fantastic job. My screen's a little dirty there. You can see it in the sun's reflection. I'd wipe it like that, but I'd probably touch things that I don't want to touch right now. But yes, I am a millennial farmer, and yes, I still know how to use a steering wheel. We're coming up on a section here where GPS can do us some really good. We don't own this bar, we'll talk about it here in a second, but at this point right here is obviously only about half the swift will swap. And since this doesn't have swath control on it, where I can shut off sections of it, now right here, is now getting over applied where it's double green you know, if you guys can see that it's a little darker green there and versus this so if you had swath control with your gps and if you own the bar which we don't because we rent the bar then at that point in time you could have just not double applied product there and when you get into these weird looking head head headlands like this that's where it also starts to play it really pays down here in southern iowa to have swath control on equipment So here's another feature that we have. Under this red flag, I have two uh, tabs which I have in there. One is rock, so if I'm driving along and I see a rock in the field, I can hit rock, and we'll, we'll do that for fun anyways. Boom, if I hit rock, we'll go over it here. You'll see it in a second. Right there, it marked a rock. So later on, I can come back and find out in that general vicinity where that rock was or another issue that i'm running into after a wet fall and wet spring so far is tile problems so say i have a hole on a tile i hit the tile problems and boom i can mark a tile problem and then i can come back to that later on to find the hole and fix it there's a rock Ding. Woo! Headlands are done. 
I was really starting to stress having to, you know, turn the steering wheel every now and then. As a millennial, I shouldn't have to subject, subject myself to that. The government should give us free steering systems in all of our tractors, along with everything else free. That should be the way it works. Millennial thinking. Just kidding, guys. But I am ready to eat my sandwich, so I'm kind of happy that I'm going to be using GPS to go back and forth so I can eat. Now that I'm done with my Andros, there's some parts of the field that I might want to come back to uh, my smart path. So I just have to save this today, the 29419N, uh, I always save it as NH3, and then I put smart. Okay, so now I have that saved there, um, and I can go back, and now I can do uh, a reset, reset my guidance. Um, where I can now load a pattern or new pattern, which will come up to my options, which is straight A, B line. That's what we're going to go for. There's the smart path. If you have a pivot, we have that option. Identical curve right there. Adaptive curve. I don't really ever use those too often. Um, so we're going to go to straight path. My guidance is already all set in there. So now I have two options. I can do an A, B line where I can put the A, B, A down here drive to the other end of the field and press a B. Here's where I can hit this button and this gives my current direction heading which is 365 degrees which is because this is a mainly that's north and behind me is south so then I can type in a degree heading here which zero degrees is north, uh, 180 degrees is south and then 90 is east and the other one is west. So I'm going to do that. So right here, if I hit this button, it's going to ask me what I want. I'm going to go to zero. So then it just gave me my head in my AB straight line at exactly north and south here on this pass, which these grid lines run north and south as well. So that's how I got my AB line. And if I want to, I can go back and reset it, load the other smart path, which I'll do back here on these other ones. But I'm going to pull these back and forth ones so that I can eat my lunch. Ham Swiss mayonnaise on a Hawaiian bread. Pretty tasty. Would you like a bite of that? No! I'll give him some, don't worry. Yep, gotta do that pass again. Got too distracted by my sandwich and forgot to turn the anhydrous on. Not the first time, won't be the last time, and I'm probably not the only other person to ever do that either. Whoops. Why we pull anhydrous ammonia is because the anhydrous ammonia is our source of nitrogen. Corn needs the nitrogen to grow. And this is kind of a, kind of a subject of interest for people because that's how nitrates can end up in soil water. This stuff right here going into the ground in the form that it is, is positively charged, NH3. And when soil is negatively charged, it's, it clings to the soil, it's stable. But as over time, there's a life cycle of the nitrogen where it grabs some other molecules um, and then it has a bacteria that starts to break it down, which turns it into nit uh, two forms and then it ends up in nitrate, which the nitrate is the, what the plant uses actually as its form of nitrogen, but actually the nitrate is also negatively charged, so therefore it can move within water, which is how it actually gets into the plant, and also how the nitrates can end up in the groundwater where people are causing the troubles. So you gotta be responsible with your nitrogen and not apply too much. This is also where GPS comes in handy. You can build yield zones and variable rate the nitrogen along with the auto swap so you're not over applying. So then you can put down the amount of nitrogen essentially for the yield zone which we can kind of know that on our soils better soil types grow better yields. So that's why we variable rate our seed. So we can variable rate our nitrogen to what we would think that corn should grow. So we're only gonna supply enough nitrogen to that corn in theory of what it would use during the season. So there's not, ex uh, there's not ex excessive nitrates left after the growing season is used. But that's not the only solution there. GPS can help. Uh, you can improve the drainage on your soil. You can know your soils, know how much nitrogen your soils can hold at a given time. That's a huge key as well. 
Um, then you can also look at using cover crops. If cover crops are, use, uh, are, are an option in your area in your growing season, because then after you get the corn off and you put a cover crop on there, like cereal rye here in Iowa, that clings to the extra nitrates and holds them there, keeps them out of the groundwater. It's just about farmers being responsible uh, with their use of nitrogen. So I'm not out here polluting the groundwater right now if that's maybe what some people are thinking. I'm just trying to grow corn. I about forgot to say nitrogen stabilizers, uh, which kill that bacteria. I don't know the name of it, but I'll put it down here. Uh, which kills the amount of bacteria in your soil that converts the nitrogen and the form that it goes into the ground at into the nitrate and that's like what essentially what products like NSERV do it is kind of like a weird bacterial insecticide from what I understand so as your populations of the bacteria start to grow back into your soil therefore it starts to convert the nitrogen over into the nitrate uh, over a longer period of time if that makes sense to you guys it's a way to stabilize the nitrogen in your soil this tank is not parked in a good spot so in theory the perfect nitrogen pass would be variable rating your nitrogen to a yield zone where you're knowing your soils where how much it can hold using swath control so you're not over applying and using a nitrogen stabilizer and when you're done put it into a cover crop so it's pretty simple right we can just get that done like that oh here we go gonna have to use this weird circle thing to get around that oh boy whoa this is difficult don't know if we're gonna get it Oh, it's like I've used one of those before. Yep, she comes. Woo! Got that done. Good thing now I can go back the other way because this using this thing is way labor intensive. I can't be doing that. No way. Uh uh. Product. Time to change tanks. We ran out. I gotta switch over here to the single one. They only brought me a single one because I've got uh, in the neighborhood of probably about 10 acres left or a little less. Um, why I wear the gloves and the goggles? A, my girlfriend thinks the goggles are sexy. Hey, girl. And But really, the anhydrous ammonia is super cold so it can freeze burn you. It's attracted to moisture so it likes to go to your eyes, your nose, your mouth if you get it out. And it's an inhalation ha hazard. I should have a mask. I don't have a mask. So shame on me. But I wear these to protect my eyes, protect my skin, where I can be touching the bowels in case we get any leaks. Uh, and hydrous ammonia is probably the most dangerous thing that uh, I deal with as a farmer. Got it, didn't die. All right, now that we're done with the AB line, I'm gonna save it real quick. Uh, save. Sometimes it would do NS for north south because that's what that was, was the north south line. Even though I won't have, in case I have multiple AB lines, which I don't in this field, we'll save that anyways. Oh, there we go, saved. Now I go back, I'm going to reset it. I'm going to reset my guidance pattern. I'm going to load this pattern there. So I might have gone out of frame. So there's my smart line, straight. So we're going to take this. There's my smart path. I'm going to load my smart path there. Excuse my dirty fingernails, I was in the mud this morning. I'm going to load it. Boom, now i got my smart path ready to go. But now I can go over here, which I could show you on this, but as you can tell, this is a windy piece. There's where I turned off the auto steer. 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 Um, so those aren't actual holes. This is up here where the tank was. As you can tell, I've applied all the other bits. 
but I'm going to take the auto, I'm going to use the smart path to go along this line because straight lines don't work when you get fields that look like this. This is where the smart path is used and then here's on the straight parts where I used uh, the AB lines, straight lines. All right, let's go finish that. We'll catch you up. Um, that's pretty much going to do it for me. Uh, we'll look back at this. It says that I did uh, 50 acres here um, and 49.3 on the Raven. I know for a fact that this farm has 47 acres at it, right at it. So on fifth, so I did a three acres more, so about between five and six percent extra product got put down on this field. I won't gain anything from that with the nitrogen. Um, but I really won't lose anything from it either. It's just an extra expense on about 5% five, 5 extra expense for the fact that I had overlap in here without the swath control. If this was seed, I'd A, spend more money on seed, and B, I lose yield when the high population gets too high on seed. But anyways, we're done here. We're done pulling anhydrous, uh, other than I got about 20 acres left where they're doing dirt work. So thank you for watching. I'm pretty sure Bandit would be pretty happy if you subscribed to the channel. And we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Have a good one.